Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech Ducom video, we're going to be discussing as well as analyzing tech news, which as usual has popped up at the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. We actually have several very interesting stories to go through today, uh, but you may notice that, well, I am actually recording kind of in the new location at the moment. There is still a ton of stuff to do, including putting uh, foam up to deaden the sound and get a new camera and other bits and pieces. But uh, today is actually my last day with the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 3080. Um, so I was actually needing to film anyway, simply because uh, obviously I had to give my thoughts and opinions of the card for review purposes. So, given there's just so much cool stuff to talk about, I was like, you know what, it's been a while since I've been on camera. Let's do it. Let's do it! Um, yeah, so I guess the first thing to discuss <laughs> is uh, about the two trillion of you, well, maybe not two trillion, but quite a number of you, that actually messaged me regarding AMD and the Infinity Cache. There is a patent that has been uh, filed and subsequently discovered um, obviously the patent filed by AMD, and it was discovered, I believe, by Momomo, first of all, on Twitter. So, Infinity Cash, if you're a regular viewer, first of all, commiserations to you for putting up with me, um, is something I've been talking about for a long time. And one of my sources told me about Infinity Cash as a very quick reminder. It's essentially AMD's way of increasing the performance of the GPU by not needing to just have a ridiculously wide memory bus, i.e. let's say 384 bit or what have you, and also increasing uh, core clocks on the memory. So that was a terrible way to explain that, but memory clocks. So for example, switching to uh, GDDR6X rather than Vanilla R6. And I was told that on the highest end SKUs, we are looking at up to 128 megabytes of Infinity Cache. And what it seems to be is, I guess the best way of describing it is Infinity Cache on steroids. It basically is kind of a crossbar technology. This is according to a patent which is also pumped up. Um, and it basically aims to reduce the uh, data duplication across caches. There is a ton more to this patent that honestly is kind of outside the scope of this video because I need to read over the patent extensively to be able to explain it. I haven't had time yet, but uh, that's the too long didn't read gist of it. I also feel that it's fair to mention that while this does seem to be accurate, a patent is only a patent. And so until it becomes official from AMD, I will still have a small amount of salt. I also feel that it's appropriate to say that while I am happy that it does appear to be accurate and I'm very pleased that my reports were accurate, apparently, at the end of the day, um, I can't take credit for this other than being one to be able to report it. Um, I was privileged that my sources did give me this information. They could have kept it to themselves or given it to someone else. So I feel very grateful for them to have uh, shared this information with me. And of course, I'm also very grateful to you all who have been watching my content, sharing my content, because obviously as a community, I think we've built a pretty positive community, which is why at the end of the day, uh, more people are subscribing to the channel, but also the fact that we are getting these leaks because I've actually asked some leakers, well, why did you give it to me, because, you know, I'm nowhere near as big as some of the other channels, and they said, well, it's just because you're fairly neutral with your coverage, but also the community is pretty great, um, and I feel that, um, you know, I just want to help you grow. So if it wasn't for all of you, including the leakers, and even the person who's just literally subscribed, like, yesterday, then none of this would be possible. So again, I just feel very humbled by that. Regardless, I do believe that the cache amount on the GPU is also increased substantially too. And so I am pretty confident at this point of most of the information that my sources have told me. Again, the one thing I'm less confident on are the naming schemes. I've been told by a couple of little birdies at this point that the dual fan design is certainly not the RX 6700, which is what I've called it several times in a row now, so oops. Um, so I'm not sure what that card is. 
it could be the 6800, it could be the 6600, it could be called Mammoth's tea set, I honestly don't know. Um, but yeah, so I do believe that I got the naming scheme for that incorrect, but in terms of performance, I believe that I am pretty damn uh, correct with the overall performance targets of the RX 6000, I've said for a long time, I think that they will be competitive with NVIDIA's Ampere cards. I've been told that the 6800 XT, or whatever it ends up being called, is going to be roughly on par with the 3080. Um, one person has told me that certain SKUs have not had their clocks 100% decided yet, and I was also told that certain cards are not launching until next year, most likely the lower end SKUs. So for this video, we'll say the 6700 and other GPUs may not launch until next year. That's not me confirming it, because I don't know the SKU names with some of the products at this point. But yeah, so for the 6800 XT, let's call it, is apparently about on par with the 3080. And I was told by someone else that you're going to need to look at the benchmarks. Um, they were referring to me as a reviewer kind of thing, that uh, some, some games are going to be faster on NVIDIA, some are faster on AMD. And again, a couple of people now have hinted to me that AMD do lose in hardware-based ray tracing, their DLSS technology, and it's not, of course, because AMD's tech works differently, is apparently faster than NVIDIA's, but less accurate slash aesthetically pleasing, so I guess it's kind of a trade-off of what you want to do. Um, so, basically what I'm saying is AMD's next-generation GPUs, I believe, will absolutely kick butt. I also want to quickly tackle another rumour that's been swirling around the internets, um, and this one's kind of weird to me that it's gained any traction at all, because what it basically does is ignores AMD's own ray tracing patents, as well as the disclosures that NVIDIA, sorry, not NVIDIA, Microsoft have made regarding the Xbox Series X, and it's basically how ray tracing will be performed on the highest end SKUs, and of course we could then kind of break that down for lower end SKUs, but let's just pick on the uh, 6900 XT, which is what is being referred to here. They claim that out of the 80 compute units, 20 of them are dedicated to hardware-based ray tracing, which of course leaves 60 for traditional rasterization or compute-based tasks. The thing is, that's just not how it works on the cards. I am pretty damn positive. Not even because sources have told me that that's not how it works, but just logic. And again, you can look at the patents yourself. Uh, if you haven't seen them, I do suggest you give them a quick read over if you're technically minded. Or you can also look at the Hot Chips conference breakdown that I've provided for the Xbox Series X. Microsoft did not cover all of the characteristics of RDNA 2 GPUs. There were a number of things missing, including the uh, compute queue structure and other bits and bobs, but they did give you an overview-ish of the GPU and its functionality for ray tracing. And basically, RDNA 2 class GPUs, so that's the PS5, the Xbox Series X, and the PC all use similar tech. There are, however, customizations with each of the uh, products. So Sony, Microsoft have customized their particular hardware a little bit when it comes to the ray tracing. Microsoft have even confirmed it, by the way. So how it works with the um, RDNA 2 architecture is that basically you have um, dedicated hardware, which tells the GPU to perform specific operations, BVH, uh, ray tracing intersection uh, calculations, and then the TMU, texture mapping units, have two jobs. One is um, mapping textures, and the other one is to actually perform the duties of uh, some of the calculation for hardware-based ray tracing. That's why some people have called this the uh, hybrid approach for ray tracing, because essentially you're reusing silicon. It's actually a pretty smart approach. It does have some drawbacks compared to NVIDIA's, but it also has some benefits too. Um, again, I believe that NVIDIA's approach is faster, but the approach that AMD has is also very scalable, because obviously, 
it's a lot easier to scale across multiple different um, tiers and products. And given, obviously, that their architecture was also going to be used in consoles, it basically means that you have less silicon, which is, I don't want to say doing nothing, but is not being used, at the very least, in certain tasks. And obviously, silicon itself, it's not just, oh, my yields, but, you know, heat and power and whatever else that also kind of play a, a role. Although, typically, of course, inactive parts of uh, silicon are not drawing power anyway, but that's an entirely different discussion. Anyway, long story short, um, and again, I'm glazing over a lot of these details because we've discussed them several times in the past on the channel. And you can check out my um, hot chips analysis for Xbox. It's pretty extensive on how hardware-based ray tracing works for um, the RDNA2 class of GPUs. So yeah, uh, again, I think it's quite interesting what... Um, I just think it's interesting that people are actually running with the story. I find it just kind of weird. Um, oh, and talking of PlayStation, there is actually a really a couple of... I can't believe I'm about to discuss this one. <laughs> oh, God. Um, yeah, so basically the internet is kind of freaking out because of a bolt on the PS5 or a nut or whatever the bloody hell you want to call it. Um, yeah, it's literally at the side of the console and people are like, what could that be for? I mean, it's almost certainly it's for the SSD. That's not insider information, it's just what else could it be? Um, yeah, it... <sighs> The way Sony have been handling the PS5 um, reveal is kind of frustrating uh, because they've also not given Japanese YouTubers access to the GUI. So you cannot find out, for example, how the UI works and so on. And I don't think there's any really big conspiracy theory here. I just think that Sony are still being Sony. Um, like it or dislike it. I personally find it very frustrating as a reviewer, but I find it more frustrating as someone who just wants to see the console. Um, but there you go. They're not showing the GUI yet. They've not allowed YouTubers to kind of see the inner workings. There are some comments, I don't remember who made them offhand, uh, from Sony a while ago to investors that the entire UI is seeing quite a big overhaul. Um, and obviously we're seeing like a trillion patents at this point that it has kind of like Alexa technology. So you could say like, you know, play game. But apparently one of the big things is that you can also jump to different sections of games as well. Um, I'm not sure how this works in practice, honestly, but it could be kind of cool. I think at this point there's like about a month, a little bit to go until the console launches. So hopefully we do learn what the GUI looks like at some point <laughs> before that. Um, I did joke a while ago that I was expecting in the last PlayStation event that they would just reveal the price and then not the release date or vice versa. And we would just be like, <laughs> going into the local store and then just happen to see the PlayStation on shelves like we did with the Sega Saturn back in the day, if you are um, old enough to actually remember that. It was a really bizarre time in the console market, that was. Uh, but yeah, uh, there's also something else too, while I'm on the subject, and that's Godfall. Um, there have been some discussions that Godfall was running at 120 FPS at 4K, and the developers have kind of said, no, they're not doing that. Um, they've actually not finalized, apparently, the resolution and frame rate targets at this point, and... Yeah, kind of annoying, but there you go. I expect, honestly, it's going to be a 4K 60 game, but personally, I have zero interest in it, especially now that they've actually announced that you have to always have an internet connection. I don't want that in a game. I know that nowadays everyone has an internet connection, essentially, but it can go down. I mean, Moving House has been one of those things where I really didn't realize how much I used the internet. Um, I, I was using a tethered connection for the little bit of time I was online using my uh, cell phone. And generally I don't have like a huge data plan on my cell phone because I just don't use it that much. Like my phone is really for calls, texts, and a little bit of kind of browsing the internet. That's pretty much it. If I'm bored and kind of traveling on the train or whatever, I might 
look at a website. I don't really do too much. Like my PC is where I do most of my browsing and productivity and all that stuff. So I don't need a huge amount of data, especially uh, with the current conditions with, you know, Wi-Fi being so prevalent anyway. And so my like, I don't know, 12 gigabytes or whatever is more than adequate for me typically, um, unless I'm kind of traveling abroad, which obviously is not really a thing at the moment. And I was just literally looking at the gigabyte stick down. Um, and so I, I definitely notice, um, I, I definitely am more appreciative, I suppose is the best way of describing it, of um, the internet situation. But uh, I kind of rambling more in this video than what I initially planned to. So, oops. There is also one other small little thing. Um, and I'm kind of hesitant to bring it up because I know that people are going to get mad at me, but I'm going to mention it anyway. I have a sneaking suspicion that a variant of the Infinity Cache is in the PS5. Now, the reason I say that is because when I was asking my sources, and a couple of them have been very accurate. These same sources told me that the PS5 was running incredibly quiet, very cool, and they gave me all of the breakdown on the PS5 testing uh, procedures from Sony. That's turned out to be accurate. They told me that the, uh, the uh, cooling solution was also very different. It was very unique. Uh, they gave me some of the insights, and lo and behold, we started to see uh, patents for that. They gave me other information as well. All of this has proven to be pretty darn accurate, but one hint they did give me is cache coherency, and I've mentioned this in videos before, cache coherency for the PS5 is incredibly important. And this is one of the reasons that we see cache scrubbers. In fact, Cerny himself did mention this, but in the uh, one of my videos, I honestly don't remember which one it was at this point. It may have been the cooling pattern uh, analysis that I did. I could be wrong. But in one of them, I did mention that when I asked them, and my source that is, why does it look like there's some type of stacked memory on the die? Are we looking at 3D stacked memory? They told me, and I quote, think PS Vita, end quote. I don't want to quote too much from a source. Um... And so I don't know if that is the case for the PS5, if there is some type of large chunk of cash on the die, or whether it's some type of um, infinity cash, like we see with this. I am still pretty damn confident in my information that PS5 does have custom RDNA 2 uh, features, or rather, more specifically, it's built on RDNA2, but with custom features, which are not seen on RDNA2 silicon. I am pretty confident at this point. I'm not as confident about it, however, as I was with the AMD information, including all the photos and stuff that I've leaked. But I, I, I'm reasonably, I wouldn't put it this way, I wouldn't be, unsh I wouldn't be surprised if this did turn out to be accurate. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see on that. At this point, I I honestly just want Sony to announce everything because I think it's really frustrating. Um, I think that they'll probably do a teardown at this point after the PS5 is released. I really hope so. That'll probably coincide as well with RDNA 2 being announced for the desktop and blah, blah, blah. So they'll probably have like uh, a lot less NDAs to worry about. Hopefully that's what's been happening. I don't know. And ow, my neck just crunched. Um, anyway, with all of that said, uh, I'm going to let you all go. As I said, this has been a really rambly video. I did not mean for it to be so rambly. Um, but thanks anyway for watching the video. Um, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.